Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here. Well, what is the cost you are willing to pay for immigration? We all know that the Democratic Party and those on the left have pulled at the heartstrings of the American people saying they're just people, we need to let them in. Well, truth is, they are a lot of good people and this video is not an attack on immigrants themselves. There are many people who want to come to the United States of America and they want to as good people because they are good people. But the question that we need to focus on is what is the cost you're willing to pay? Well, according to an article that was put out on FAIR, which is called the Federation for American Immigration Reform, you might be shocked by some of their findings. Check out this report, The Cost of Illegal Immigration to the United States. The report goes on to detail that at the federal, state, and local levels, taxpayers shell out approximately $134.9 billion to cover the cost incurred by the presence of more than 12 and a half million illegal immigrants and about 4.2 million citizen children of illegal aliens. That amounts to a tax burden of approximately $8,075 per illegal alien family member and a total of about $116 billion. The total cost of illegal immigration to United States taxpayers is both staggering and crippling. In 2013, FAIR estimated the total cost of approximately $113 billion. So in under four years, the cost has risen nearly $3 billion. This is a disturbing and unsustainable trend now on the screen, you're going to see a chart, and this is a chart that's a breakdown of everything I just basically read to you, but it's a more diagraphed version. But as you can see at the federal level, it cost us about 46 billion, that's an estimate, uh, about $46 billion in cost. At the state and local level, it cost about 89 billion, which puts us at a whopping $135 billion debt to the American people. Now that is offset a little bit because there are, uh, tax contributions by immigrants there. And you could see uh, it's about a total of $19 billion considering both the federal and the state level. There's a $19 billion payment there. So if we take that uh, $19 billion from the $136 billion, we're left at a whopping $116 billion that you and I need to pay in order to get this done. That's a huge deficit. Now, Tucker Carlson did a report on this, and I'm gonna quote to you something that he stated in a video, and I'll link it below so you can uh, go watch it in its entirety. But here's what he had to say in regards specifically to immigration. He said, if we eliminate expenses of illegal immigration, that's $116 billion that he's talking about eliminating, then we can make every public college tuition free, which normally cost about $70 billion, and we would still have $50 billion left over. Free college tuition, immigration costs, and all he was simply doing there is showing how massive this is costing us here in America. And if, if we're honest with each other, there's motives on both sides. The Democratic Party want to allow immigrants in so they can carry the, the vote. It's a political statement. This is what they want. Let's allow immigrants in so we get more votes at the ballot box. Okay, the Republicans on the other side like to allow them in because, hey, they're all about their business lobbyists. They're big lobbyist partners and they say, hey, we need lower wages uh, for the people crossing the border. So therefore, allow them in. So both parties, we have to ask both sides, are you really looking out for the betterment of the American people? What about our wallet? What about what's going on in our lifestyles? What repercussions is this really going to have on Americans? Is it truly, as the Democrats say about the heartstrings, we just need to let everybody and anybody in like they're attempting to claim? Or is it a political move by the Democratic Party? And I ask you, What's at the very front and center of most of politicians' agenda? Money, money, votes, votes, power, power. There's always something in play. So we, the American people, have to take those factors out and decide for ourselves what is best. And as I stated in the beginning of this video, it's not a direct attack against any person. I'm just simply sharing facts and statistics. Here's one little nugget uh, that I also want you to just to think about, and that's over in Sweden. You see, Sweden has let more um, immigrants in than pretty much any other country in the European Union or over in Europe. They've been very generous th th to them. But at what cost has it cost them? Well, check out this report. This first one is from spasia.com. 
Sweden to become a third world country by 2030, according to the United Nations. The report goes on to say that the UN report HDI or Human Development Index predicts a significant decrease in Sweden's prosperity unlike their Nordic neighbors who will retain their top positions and even strengthen them globally in the long run. In 2010, Sweden was on 15th place in that ranking, but according to UN forecasts, Sweden is now going to be in 25th in 2015 and in 2030 they're going to land in 45th place. Now you can see here's the actual report. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll hit these pages here these kind of have your HDI rating for each year. You have 2010, 2015, and you have 2030 there, and you can see the numbers are decreasing there for Sweden. So what does that tell you in a nutshell? That the United Nations already knows the mass repercussions uh, that immigration will have. Therefore, they're pushing them further and further down, making Sweden basically a third world country by 2045. Here's some other articles I want you to check out. This one's by WJLA.com, put out March 2018. Crime stats show increase in violence against women in Sweden after refugee influx. Here's another, foreignpolicy.com, the death of the most generous nation on earth, little Sweden, has taken in far more refugees per capita than any country in Europe, but in doing so, it is tearing itself apart. Sweden has been very generous to let them in. As a result, crime is up. As a result, debt is up. And as a result, by 2045, they could be part or become a third world country. So I ask you again, is it worth the payout? Is it the heartstrings? Is it a political move for the Democrat and Republican Party? What is truly going on here? Well, I guess I'll leave that in your court to decide. But in the end, the ultimate decision is yours. Where do you stand? Please comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you like what you heard, give me a thumbs up, share it on all your social media outlets, and subscribe to the channel. Also, subscribe to my backup channel at Lisa Haven Vlogs. And don't forget, most importantly, check out my partner at noblegoldinvestments.com. You need to make sure you have some kind of backing of a 401k or an Roth IRA because we never know what tomorrow holds economically. And if we're anything like Sweden in the very near future, well, you're going to want to have that backing. So go to noblegoldinvestments.com. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.